Okay, thanks very much, David, for your um, presentation. It was really cool to see how gamification can be used in the real world. Um, yeah, it was quite good. So I will get rid of these so we don't enter an infinite feedback loop, although we might all end up somehow transformed into the matrix. Okay. How are we doing? Oh, yeah. Okay, if anyone asks, my presentation was ready right away. Uh, <laughs> didn't take me any time. Okay, cool. Thanks very much for coming to my presentation. Like I said, if someone hasn't warned you, I like to do like tricky, uh, interactive things. So just be prepared for that. I know we're at a moot and we all like to be all businessy and etc. But have fun, have a bit of a laugh, and it'll be a good time. So. I'm John Oakley, I'm one of the developers at Moodle HQ. I've spoken at a few moots before. Um, I'm really excited to be here in Sydney talking about the latest thing that I've been working on, which is virtual reality in Moodle. And I hope that by the end of this pre presentation, you'll be as excited about it as I am. Um, even in David's school, I think there's a lot of opportunities there to move into a more integrated experience with VR, integrating it into the courses. And a lot of you guys might be the same. Maybe you hadn't thought about it, and maybe I'll be able to show you why. It's going to be great. So I'm addicted to Twitter because I'm a millennial. Um, so as my presentation goes on, please feel free to take as many photos as you possibly can of the slides and of what's going on, and hashtagging at mootau17. Um, no one can remember my Twitter name, it's difficult to spell, so don't worry about that. Just focus on the hashtag, get some photos up there, and then uh, my wife will know that I am in Sydney giving a presentation. <laughs> okay, so what have we got? VR. There's a number of technologies that it currently exist in the world that are around VR. There's a lot of hype around it. Everyone wants to get involved, everyone wants a slice of the VR pie, as it were. Um, so one of the ones you might have seen uh, is the HTC Vive, which I've been showing around the moot. Um, so you might have had a go of that. It's very good. Um, the picture quality is great. Another one is the Oculus Rift. That's another good one. And if you're bored of this list, um, something that might make it more exciting is I'm going to give away uh, one of these VR devices today, if you're good, okay? Um, it's the next one I'm about to show. So, and the last technology, it's even better than either of these. It's um, Google Cardboard. <laughs> so yes, that's not what we splashed the investment funding on a million VR sets. Unfortunately, I asked Rowan and he said, no, John, unless we want it come out, coming out of your own personal bank account. And uh, although I did want to give that to you, uh, you know, it's, it's, there was some bureaucratic reason I couldn't. Anyway, no, so what I am going to do is I am going to get you all to um, yeah, a Google Cardboard, which is going to allow you to experience VR. Maybe not quite as good as the Vive, but it's a good way of demonstrating that even though these VR technologies are huge and expensive now, they're going to be coming a lot more prominent, and it's going to be a lot cheaper and a lot more accessible. And Google Cardboard is one example of how everyone has a smartphone that can run it, and it's already there. OK, so let's talk about VR for a second. The, in an ideal world, we're just Wait, close your eyes with me. Remember I said I was going to be annoying during the presentation. Close your eyes. Just imagine you got plugged in. Everything feels real. You can touch the world around you. It just is incredibly realistic. That's the idea, right? We're not there. Oh, it's such a bad thing, right? Or is it? Because if we had perfect virtual reality, how would we know if we're in reality or not? We might be in the matrix. Anyway, OK. Sorry, I'll, uh, I'll go back to normal moot mode. OK. Um, so VR is about more than just the headsets, though. Like, we have all these technologies now, the HTC Vive, the Oculus Rift, Google Cardboard. They exist in the world now. But VR has actually existed for hundreds of years. And you may find that surprising, because it still costs $2,000 to get today. But before, it was a lot cheaper. In fact, I think you all know what I'm talking about when you say imagination. That's actually a virtual reality of its own. When you're a child playing games, it's your own kind of virtual reality world that you're creating for yourself. And that's how humans have always learned and explored. So there's nothing different here, except now we have this uh, big goggles that are expensive and give us a headache. But for some reason, it's cooler now. I don't know. Anyway. So another good example is how VR has already existed, and it's not just the headsets, is um, Escape the Room games. 
So you may have heard there's these places you can go where they lock you in a room and you pay for them to do that to you. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but anyway, it's good fun. You get locked in a room and you have to work out a number of different puzzles as your way to escape. It's this real experience that it's virtual reality, but it's nothing to do with computers or goggles. So if you've ever done even a classroom workshop, you'll know that um, that, that kind of is a type of virtual reality in itself if you're telling a story. Everyone imagine that you're part of a group that needs to do something. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is we're going to play an escape the room game right now. Uh, can I get everyone to lock the doors? Okay, they're locked. Okay, you can't escape. You're stuck with my presentation. I'm sorry. Okay, so I did promise I was going to give away gifts. And if you came to the front, thanks to the people who did, you get a free gift. All right, ready? I don't know. Maybe someone can give these out for me. Do, 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 do. It's good fun. <laughs> oh yeah, he was already at the front. That's that's the smart thing. So now for the rest of the moot, you've got to be um, uh, always going to the front because you never know what prize you might get. Um, I can't vouch for the rest of the moot though. I don't know if anyone else is giving away prizes. Um, ne next presentation, perhaps someone will give away something even cooler than me, and you'll just remember. Um, oh man, that John guy. He thought he was so cool giving away pieces of cardboard. What is with that guy? Okay, so the challenge is, if you have one of these cardboards, the first person to get three fully finished ones to me wins the HTC Vive. Don't tell Martin, I can't actually give it away. Um, <laughs> but the key is, you have to get three of them finished to me. You can't just have one individually finished. And that'll be important later on. So. Where are we at with VR in education today? <laughs> at the moment, there are a number of different ways um, that VR already is in education. So let's take, for instance, a flight simulator. Um, I don't know about you, but I took a plane to the moot, and I'm very grateful that there was um, vigorous training put upon the pilot who, was, um, who managed to get us to Sydney. Um, and one of, the way, one of the things they go through is they have to be put in a virtual cockpit. It's not virtual in the sense that you put on goggles. It actually exists, and it's modeled after the actual plane. And they have to flick the right switches. They've got the screen on that makes it look like they're flying. Yes, I know the, uh, they're quite a bit of a puzzle to put together. Anyway, um, yeah, so um, it feels real. The actual cockpit itself moves around. That's all part of the virtual reality that they're creating to create an realistic replication of where he needs to be. Because there's a lot of danger when it fly comes to flying a plane. I mean, it's a very, it's a safe thing if you know what you're doing. So they're creating this safe environment where he can learn, or he, or he her, her or him can learn, oh dear, I've messed up my pronouns, where they can learn and learn how to be a good pilot without any uh, risk or without any cost. Um, so it's a really good use of VR that's in education today already. Um, there's things like Google Tours, where you basically just put on your Google Cardboard and you're instantly transported thousands of kilometers across the world. And you can see the Great Pyramids, or you can see the um, Rio de Janeiro, um, Christ the Redeemer. You can just basically vi visit anywhere, which is an amazing miracle in our modern age. But it's all using technology that's available for, de for um, today and doesn't actually have any great costs. So maybe you came to this uh, presentation thinking, well, VR is not very important to education, but it, it's already out there. So what's the future going to look like? Of course, we're all imagining. Everyone's got goggles on. You're just you're moving around, pretending something's there. Looks a bit silly, right? Well, there's a number of different um, ways that uh, edu education with v VR with education will improve in the future. I think one of the major uh, downsides of VR at the moment um, is there's no feedback. So you have the goggles on, it looks real, but you're kind of just you're doing this. There's no, there's no tactile feedback. So there's a lot of technology out there that's going to be improving that as we go. Because one of the important parts of learning is that touching 
if you, if you have a small child or a um, niece or nephew, you've known that that's the first way they interact with the world is touching and feeling. So it's really important. That's the way our brain pathways have been developing over the course of our lives. So that's one of the big hurdles for VR. Um, I think the biggest hurdle is not the technological hurdle, but uh, the uh, psychological hurdle, because they can actually plug things into you that will make you feel like something's there that's not. But I don't know about you, but uh, that creeps me out. So the next question is, will VR replace education as we know it? Are classrooms a thing of the past? Are we all just going to plug ourselves in in the morning and then at 3 o'clock unplug ourselves and then participate in real life again? Well, there's some situations where that might be good. A virtual classroom for someone who's uh, living remotely. I was homeschooled growing up and it would have been quite interesting to be able to just put on goggles and be part of a classroom. And that's the future that maybe the next generations can have. But at the end of the day, we're people and we interact and being there in person is so valuable. And if a lot of you guys might be um, teachers here today, and I think that that role is still going to be playing vital importance. But VR is a tool. It's a tool that we can use. Um, and I think, yeah, I hope that you're starting to think maybe there are ways that you can integrate VR into the way you teach or the courses you're designing or um, the Moodle instances that you're running somehow. Okay, so how are we going? Has anyone gotten to three yet? I should have made this easier. I'm sorry, everyone. Oh, dear. Yes. Uh, uh, you can outsource. Yes, that's not against the rules. Um, well, there you go. Next time what I'll do is I'll get Rowan up here and he can demonstrate the perfect way to put together a VR headset. Are you cool with that? No, no. no okay, okay. <laughs> so, VR is in Moodle today. You may not have known it, but there's um, a lot of, there are a few ways that Moodle supports VR, such as Sketchfab, which allows you to load in models and view them in VR. And something that I've recently helped develop which is um, the quiz venture model, module. Who has, who here has visited my booth? If you put up your hand. Okay. I've been, I've been super busy for the last two days showing people the VR thing and it's so much fun, especially if you've never used VR before. It's amazing um, to use it for the first time and really see what the possibilities might be. So I will demonstrate here we go. This is what it looks like. Unfortunately, uh, it took too long to build all the VR headsets, so I'm just going to have to show it in 2D. I know it's a bit boring, but here we go. Okay, so does anyone remember who recently invested uh, money into Moodle? Decathlon? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Whoop. All right, look at that. Does anyone know what VR stands for? If you don't know the answer to this, I've clearly done a bad presentation. <laughs> okay. Does anyone know? Does anyone know? Yeah, I thought it was vibrant response too. Does, it, does it, someone else can finish my presentation, I think. How do you test skills? By the way, these are all questions added by people who came to the booth. So if there's anything weird in here, uh, don't blame me. Okay. What does, what part of the pig, surely it's, surely it's that, right? Um, let's see, uh-oh. Oh, dear. What? Who names these things? I don't understand anything. Okay, all right, let's go shoulder. Let's see if that's correct. Surely not, though. Is any, does any, has anyone worked like at a butcher's? That's weird. Okay, can games teach? All right. Yes, there we go. I'm glad. I don't need to convince people. All right, so there you go. Now, obviously, on a big projector screen, that's, that's one thing. Oh, that looks even better. That's cool. Um, on a big pro projector screen, it's one thing. But when you're actually in virtual reality, when you've got the goggles on, it feels real. Users 
stereographic images, one image shown to one eye, one to the other. There's nothing magic about it. It makes you experience the feeling of depth. So it's, maybe it's hard to imagine when you're just looking at a projector screen, but it's really amazing the first time you step in and think, whoa, it actually feels like there's something there. My favorite moment is when something flies above you and you're just like this, or like when something flies towards you, you have to duck to the side. That's when you start to realize that your brain is attaching it as if it was the real world. So we're presented, VR presents us with a lot of opportunities that ordinarily computer screens might not be able to. Again, it's not the be all and end all, but it, it's a tool that we can definitely use. So, what is next for Moodle's future in VR? Well, the future is what we make it, right? And Martin mentioned that standards for VR are of increasing importance because I've been talking to a lot of you as you've come to my booth and I've just noticed that you're all really interested in VR. And it's, it's not the acceptance of VR that's the problem, it's the, it's the, the technology's just not quite ready yet. We can't integrate it in, uh, into our courses. So we need standards there that can allow us to do that. But just imagine the possibilities. You might be given an assignment in your degree, you're learning to become a doctor, and you've literally got a patient there in front of you in VR, you've got to be opening up their brain and making sure you can find what's wrong with it and repairing it. You can enter a VR simulation of planets in orbit, the solar system. You can just see how they interact. Maybe you can understand a solar eclipse more than just it creating a shadow. Maybe you'd be able to walk through the database module in 3D space. You could see the entries that people have created, walk past and go, ooh, okay, what's that? Because space, this, this is how, this is the space that we're living in. It's not, it's not this, that's, that's part of our lives, yes. But when we're learning, we need to be moving. We've, um, humans learn by touching, stretching, moving. We live in the physical world. We learn with our bodies. And if, if we want to be able to teach high concepts, maybe if there's a way to bring them back to something physical, something that we, that we all understand and relate to, it will be more memorable. So, VR is one thing, AR, or augmented reality, is another. It's almost a melding of two worlds. Um, probably you've all heard of Pokemon Go, right? That's, that's probably the main way that uh, AR has entered public consciousness. So, it might be a thing like you open up your phone and you can see the world around you, but then there's an extra element that's been added in for educational purposes or otherwise. So you might be able to send your teachers, uh, send your students off out into, the, um, out into the park and they'd be able to see a tree there, they'd be able to point their camera down on their phone and be able to see the root structure underneath the ground. Something that we'd never be able to really imagine in great detail. But you'd be able to see the roots there, you could see how it interacts with other plants move it up and it would show how the sun causes photosynthesis. You might be able to point it at the sky and it would identify the clouds types for you in real time. I don't know about you, but I could never remember the difference between a cumulonimbus and a whatever else. I never got that. So maybe VR would help us to be able to identify it because it's bringing back this into the real world. Because we're teaching all these concepts, right? But they exist in the real world. But when it's on a piece of paper, how can we make it more dynamic? And AR helps us to do that. So the other last part that I wanted to talk about is um, reality in education. Now, I suppose every other talk at the MOOT has been about reality in education. But at the end of the day, this is what we want to be teaching people to be good at. We want, to, we want them to be good at interacting with the real world and doing things out there. So you might say, uh, you might be able to use artificial intelligence to tell someone when they need to practice certain things, like a move in fencing, or um, they might be a runner, and you might want to tell them when they need to run fast and when they need to run slower, when they have the right glycemic index, um, that they'd be able to do whether they need to go slower, faster, 
I'm a bit of a runner, so I'm a bit of a nerd for these things. But what's interesting is that we don't know what our bodies are capable of at the time. We're just thinking, oh, I'm running along, oh man, I'm tired. But if a computer knows you've got heaps more energy and it goes beep, beep, you're actually just being lazy right now, then I'd start running faster, wouldn't I? But this all, it all comes back to technology, doesn't it? And we want to make sure that Moodle is part of this new world of education and all these exciting new concepts. I'm not going to stand up here and say it's going to replace everything. But I do want to say that it's a tool, and I want us to be able to use it to the best of our abilities. Thank you very much. Um, does anyone have any questions? I'd be super interested to go into detail. Um, have we got one is complete? Yeah, I think I'm going to change it to one instead of three. Oh wow, everyone, that's so good, amazing. Anyway, good thing no one finished three because I can't afford to buy Martin a new uh, HTC Vive. <laughs> Yes, oh, I forgot to mention, so the VR demo is running completely in browser. It's running straight off Moodle. No additional things need to be downloaded at all. I designed it so you could uh, run it off just a simple phone right now. In fact, if you want to try it, go to johnok.com slash Moodle, and it will run just directly on your phone, and you can look around. And then if you've managed to finish your crazy puzzle box thing, I'm sorry it was so hard. Um, you can put it on and you'll be able to use it like that. And then, of course, if you happen to have a Vive or an Oculus, you can just run it on that. So my idea was to create something in Moodle that requires no extra installation that can be used by anyone. But then, as you get more technology, as you go up the scale to cardboard to Oculus and Vive, the detail gets better. But it's something that's accessible to everyone because I wanted to show that VR is here yeah, today. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, so the URL, um, I'll grab it up here. It, I'm pretty confident it will work on any phone, and if it doesn't, you'll have to come up to me and tell me that I'm no good at coding. Actually, say those words exactly in front of my boss. Uh-oh, what did I just do? Great, there we go. Ooh. Hey. Um, yeah, any other questions or thoughts that you wanted to talk about? I guess I have a follow-up question because it's mine. But, uh, so if, the, if it runs on a, uh, I've got a Vive at home so I can try that. Yeah. Um, but does it, is it like a browser specific thing? Is there a web standard for how things are presented on my canvas in terms of virtual reality? Yes, um, so there's this uh, set of standards called WebVR that I've implemented for this. It's a good example of standards in VR, and it helps us a lot because I was able to use the different ways that each VR device allows interactions, like the phone has simple movement um, of orientation of your head, but then the VR has, uh, the Vive allows you to move back and forth through virtual reality space and interact through two controllers. So these standards that I was following really allowed me to um, take the most advantage of the technology that's out there, depending on which device is available. Um, yep. Uh, yes, I definitely can. In fact, I wish I, so um, this is about augmented reality. I would love to be doing more of that kind of stuff. Um, there are some plugins out there right now that do things like um, uh, waypoints, like you can say, I want the people in my course to go to this location, this location, etc. cetera. Um, I think there's stuff with QR codes as well, I'm not sure, but I'd really like to work into that. So you might have a classroom and it has a QR code on the wall and you look at it and it shows you a 3D model of maybe a brain, a human brain or something else or a visualization of the way the internet works, for instance, something that none of us can really comprehend in our heads, but maybe if it's shown in 3D space. Another good one is um, four-dimensional objects, very interesting to math mathematicians, but they all kind of admit they can't imagine it, 
But if you see a 4D image in 3D space, it's kind of like seeing a 3D image in 2D space, which if you don't know, that's a photo. So it, some possibilities that we can't really do without it uh, become available. Uh, the way, t if you're using just the phone, unfortunately there's no way to touch it when you're using the goggles. So the way to do it is just stare at the correct dancer until you start shooting. So if the orange circle becomes a bit thicker, that means you're aiming correctly. It's good to see everyone having a go. Uh, yes, uh, so can I bring 3D assets in? Yes, so we're using a framework called 3.js, which allows you to load in almost any 3D model, which is great because um, we, you, you might have a graphic designer who knows one specific program. Well, that's good because there's libraries that can just import it in directly and it makes the whole process a lot easier. Uh, yes, so is it available to see the code, as is modal tradition? Uh, yes, it is. <coughs> Moodle uh, dash mod underscore quiz game. Yep, and then the branch is feature dash VR. Um, if you're not technical, you probably have no idea what that URL means, but basically that's where you can access the code and use it yourself. If you have someone technical on your team and send them that, they'll know exactly what it means. Um, so the quiz venture module, the 2D version, is available on the plugins DB right now. Unfortunately, the VR version is not quite ready for the plugins DB, so it's not as easy as clicking and downloading, but hopefully soon. Any other thoughts or questions? Uh, the cardboard goggles are available basically anywhere. And if you stay after the meeting, I'm sure someone will leave theirs behind and you should steal them. If you have one and you want to keep them, take them with you, because now I've just told everyone to steal them. <laughs> Any other thoughts or questions? Ten minutes? All oh, right, there you go. Nine if I like. This URL, okay. All you need to do is go to in to your Moodle directory. Go into the modules folder. And then go git clone, and then it clones this URL, downloads it. Oh dear. Thank you. Does that even work? No, that'll tell you what your uh, folder. How do you put the. Yeah, dash dash branch, okay. Well, everyone. Can blame you, not me. Okay. How's everyone going on their cardboard cutouts? Nearly done? Because after we're going to have a space battle in VR, all right? No, unfortunately, it doesn't support multiplayer. <laughs> Of what? Have you heard any update on Magic Leap? Magic Leap? No. I don't know. What's that? Uh, they're like the next, uh, they call it mixed reality. World. Mixed reality. OK. Yeah, because I know HoloLens is into that, like with the kind of augmented where it's on there. So how's mixed reality? What's that like? You interact with the thing that, that it's augmented. 
Oh, right, okay. Yeah, cool. Cool. Hey, um, a big hand for John. Fantastic. Thanks very much.